the performance of the night went to uh, uh, Gomes and Duplessis, and then the fight of the night was Moreno and Pantoja. Uh, I know you guys are probably going to ask me about Hooker. He did break his wrist. His wrist was broken in the second round. Um, and Moreno did break his hand in the first round. Who's got the first question? John Morgan. What's happening, buddy? So much, man. Uh, Dan, let's talk about the main event, Alexander Volkanovsky. Uh, I know you just put Jose Aldo in the Hall of Fame, but Volk might be the greatest featherweight of all time. Uh, just what did you think of his performance this evening and, and kind of where he stands? Total domination, man. He looked incredible. Um, you know, and, and I, I can't remember if it was a big straight right hand or left hand. He, he, he took... Looked like it, it shook him a little bit, but he didn't even stop. He kept going, and, and uh, yeah, I mean, he put on an unbelievable performance tonight. And, and yeah, here, so talented. And, you know, Volk even uh, at the end there started to strike with him, stayed on the outside side of, of uh, you know, uh, Yair was trying to keep him on the outside and hitting him with big shots, and Volk was willing to stand with him. The guy is an absolute freak. He's incredibly talented. Yeah. He said he's going to have to have surgery, so we know he's going to be out for a while. But he keeps talking about he wants to go back to lightweight and get that. You know, when he comes back, do you think he's better off staying at featherweight, or do you have interest in seeing him make that lightweight move again? Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, let's see how his surgery goes and what happens. And, you know, he, he's at one of those places now in his career. Whatever he wants to do, what are we going to say? You know what I mean? This guy's literally proven himself a million times many people believe he won you know the, the the islam fight whatever he wants to do we'll, we'll probably roll with it Hello. yeah Hello. uh pantoja obviously fight of the night incredible title fight there uh just what did you think of him tonight you know jonah's got something yeah we sent both those guys straight to the hospital as soon as that fight was over absolute dog fight incredible war Not, nothing but respect for both guys An amazing fight it's a unique position, right? Because a fight that great, a, a champion losing the belt, close fight, great fight, you might want to do a rematch, but they fought three times already. Right. So does that kind of eliminate the opportunity, or was that good enough that maybe they could go for it? It's like the Figueredo fight. I mean, it's so good. I, I, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know the answer to that question right now, but I don't think there's anybody on earth that wouldn't want to see that fight again. It was so good and so close. Yeah. have to ask you about uh, Israel Adesanya coming into the cage tonight, Drigas Duplicy, the big win. I guess uh, the decision to bring him in, not something you do all the time. Well, there was a big debate over it. I didn't, I didn't want to do it. First of all, what I don't like to do is when you have somebody like Duplessis who just big win for him, you know what I mean? He just beat the, the second best guy in the world in that division. And then, you know, somebody's going to get in their face and get aggressive with him again after they just got done getting out of a, a war. Um, but uh, Adesanya and I had a, had a debate over it, and he promised me that nothing – Crazy would happen, so we did it. You know, I know you say, hey, this is the fight business. People say nasty things, right? But the tension between those two and kind of the racial undertones and all those things, how do you... What were the racial undertones? Uh, Drigga says he's the real African fighter, and so, you know, Israel dropped some inwards yeah. in there tonight. So what was the racial... Who did? Who dropped the, the racial... Is Israel it? was saying over and over, yeah. He's, he's black. 50 in bombs. Okay, yeah. he's black. He... Who gives a shit? I was going to say, so you don't oh. have any concern about the way the build up, the tension between those two? I could care less. This is the fight business. Israel a lot of signs say, who gives a shit? Why, are, are people bitching about that? Some people. Of course yeah. they are. Oh, fucking A. All right, got it. Yeah. Too fucking bad. All right. Yeah. Let, last thing for me, then, I just want to say that's a fight that everybody wants to see. Is nine weeks in Sydney a possibility? We haven't seen Drigas yet, so we don't know what kind of condition he's in. Is that a possibility or is that too soon? I don't know. We got. We got to see. I mean, when you come out of a night like tonight, these fights are all tough wars. They were, you know. Um, we'll see how these guys feel. And, and again, when you when you come out of a fight like this, um, you know, like Pantoja and 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 Moreno and and Duplessis, and uh, you got to give these guys a couple weeks to go home and relax, and you know, let their bodies heal and spend some time with their families. And it's just it's just things that you just don't talk about right after the fight. Dana, over here. Yeah. Other side. Yeah. Um, what went into the thought to give Robbie that tribute video? Because we've had fighters like Shogun and Frank Edgar announce their retirement before their fight, and they didn't get the video. Well, I don't think we've ever really confirmed that you know somebody was retiring or whatever. Robbie and I have had several conversations. He's done 
there's no whatever. And uh, so we did it. Can you think of another, like, obviously Amanda just happened, but to Robbie. And thank God we made that video because uh, we still had 25 minutes left on ABC. So thank God. Can you, can, I know Amanda just retired and she put like the belts down and that was seemed to be a perfect ending. But can you think of another like an MMA history that a lot of people in line seem to think this is the best retirement moment we've had in the sport? Yeah, those are two really good ones. Um, I don't know. I don't know. And, and the big question was, you know, after that quick knockout, is he really done? Did you guys talk to him already? Yeah. Yeah. He was like at two o'clock today. He knew he felt great, felt better than he's ever felt. And, you know, he was feeling it today. He told me so. Well, according to Connor's Twitter, Robbie Lawler is probably going to fight again by the end of the year. According to Connor's Twitter, Robbie's Connor, Connor tweeted that he's he thinks Robbie's going to fight again. By the end of the year. <laughs> I, we've had a lot of conversations leading up to tonight, and then we've talked three times tonight. Yeah, he won't. Yeah, Robbie said he's done. Yeah, um, he won't. Hey, Dana, over here. Yeah. Um, so Alexander Pantoja winning the title, awesome performance. So he gets it. Brandon Royville was the backup for this fight. Yeah. Is he going to fight the winner? Even well, though he, he grabbed me as soon as I walked out of the octagon. He's like, let me get in there now. I'm, I'm ready. I want this fight. I'll beat both of these guys. You know, so he's fired up and wants that fight. Is he going to get it, though? We'll see. Uh, Connor tweeted a little Santa Claus emoji and said he wants to return in December. Is there any update on that possibly happening? L listen, I, I'm glad you brought that up. <clears throat> um, you know, there's a lot of business that needs to be handled before we talk about this. And I was doing an interview on Friday and a bunch of fucking scumbags wrote stories that I said, fuck you, Sada. I don't care what you Sada says. It's not even remotely close to what I said. So first of all, I'd like to say fuck you to everybody that wrote that story, number one. And number two, there's a lot of stuff that has to go on before, uh, you, you know, he fights. So it's not even, my point was, no matter who's talking about it, whether it's USADA or whoever and this and that, it's not even worth talking about right now. Everybody wants to keep bringing it up so that pieces of shit can write stories like that. Um, never did I say, I don't give a shit what USADA thinks or disrespecting USADA or anything like that. It doesn't matter what anybody says. I don't know how this whole thing's gonna play out. Let's wait and see. Without giving away, is it more than likely that Leon Edwards is going to be either fighting at Madison Square Garden or Abu Dhabi defending his title, the welterweight division? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Dana, you had Trump there at the cage side with you. What was that experience like, having him right there? Listen, we all know he's one of my very, very good friends. I love being around him. I had dinner with him last night till midnight. He's fucking awesome. He's hilarious, and I love hanging out with him. And he's such a huge fight fan. So he knows everybody. He knows everything. You know, it's just I love the guy. Did he say what his uh, favorite matchup was? Um, no, he, he he liked the whole card. You know, you want to know how crazy this guy is? He, he's driving here. He got here at like, uh, I want to say he got here at like 540. He watched the earlier fights on his phone. You know what I mean? It's like he, he loves the fights. And uh, what's really cool about being a fan of this, the way that he is, is the fighters all love him too. So uh, he had a blast tonight. What was his reaction when uh, Driscus uh, Duplessis came up to him? Yeah, no, he, he, he was blown away. He was basically talking about, he's like, God damn, this guy's huge. He's big. He's a big, strong guy. And he is. I mean, most of you have met him one-on-one. -on -one. You ever grab him, like, touch his arm or whatever? The guy's like this table. He's, he, he's, a, he's a beast, man. So, um, yeah, no. I, I don't, what was the question? Oh, yeah, you answered it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was happy to meet him, yeah. Uh, Stipe, what was that like getting that fight done? Was that hard to... Mm, no, no. Stipe's been ready to go. Um, yeah, Stipe was ready to go. Talk to him tonight. He's happy. He's in a good spot. He's ready. Mass Square Garden. He's excited. I got to assume the, the biggest win of your career to date. Uh, very impressive performance. How do you feel about uh, the way things went tonight? Oh, absolutely amazing. Uh, definitely the biggest win of my career. Leading up to this, uh, I knew there was, this was the biggest uh, fight of my career. It's Robert Whittaker. Man hasn't lost uh, to anybody else in the champion almost a decade. But I said it, this is not going to see the third round. Uh, TK in a second happened that way because, you know, I just know my fighting style. And I guess this answers all the nose questions. <laughs> You, you, you were very respectful of him coming into this fight. You know, you knew how great he was. He did have some success early on, uh, and then you see his momentum, you know, towards the end of round one. I guess, how did things play out? Was anything surprising to you in there? 
No, not at all. Uh, especially in the beginning of the fight. I, I said it. I, I can't go and fight Robert Whittaker like I fought a Brad Tavares. Um, he is too good and too calculated. I needed to um, figure out his timing. And I think the, the game plan, my coach, when I first uh, he is obviously a guru at this. He is the, the man who put this all together, coming out and fighting Southpaw against a guy like, like Whittaker. You know, I always do switch stance, but to go and, and learn a complete new style for this guy. And it just worked perfectly. But, you know, in that first, I would say, first half of the first round, I was almost checking to see, okay, what, how fast is he? How hard does he hit? And he hits hard and he hits fast. But it was just getting that timing, seeing, okay. But it was still going forward and putting pressure on. That was the plan and that's what I executed. Much easier said than done when you're fighting and standing in front of Robert Whittaker throwing these big shots. But at the end of the day, I progressed and, and I, I made that pressure forward, made the pressure forward. And I could see in his eyes when he realized this guy's not slowing down and this guy's not going away. So amazing victory and, and they leave no doubt that you're getting the title shot next, bringing Israel Adesanya into the cage. I guess, what did you make of that, of, of, of him being brought in and you guys having that face off? What did you make of the whole situation? Yeah, the only thing I made of that was uh, it's usually the... Whoa. It's usually the, um, the the container that goes into the cage, right? So, I mean, even he sees me as the champion already. So he better knows I'm the champion. And now that he's seen me in that cage, he knows what a force I am in there. He could feel the energy and I could feel how insignificant he is to me when we get into that cage. Last thing for me, uh, Dana was here earlier. He said he's not going to bother you about when you can fight, give you a little time. But everybody knows we're looking for a main event in Sydney. Is nine weeks even a possibility or is that unrealistic to ask you to be ready for a title fight in that kind of time what i say is they know what obviously knows fighters and he he has the respect to uh, know that tonight's all about celebrating myself and obviously celebrating uh, the legend of robert whittaker Drickus right here um it seemed like coming into this fight a lot of people are counting you out not giving you respect and it seemed like robert whittaker was maybe the person who was giving you the most respect in terms of what you're capable of do you think now the people appreciate what you're able to do in there and give you your recognition. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Robert Whittaker, like I said, smart guy and uh, a true warrior, a true martial artist who knows that martial arts, you are as good as your opponent makes you look. And uh, him being the warrior that he is, he came out here tonight prepared like always and he was in great shape. And, but he could see what a lot of people failed to see and that is a style that people are used to people are used to certain styles they don't know our style they don't know how we put this whole thing together and he saw that and that's why he said i'm the most dangerous opponent he's ever faced that's why he said one mistake he made is he thought i don't have anything to lose and i didn't fight like somebody who doesn't have anything to lose i fought like somebody who has everything to lose and every time i step in there i have my life to lose and I will protect that with everything. I have my family name, the Duplessis name to protect when I step in there. I have the South African flag to protect when I step in there. I have Team CIT behind me that I represent when I step in there. I have absolutely everything to lose when I step in there. And I hope I, everybody saw that tonight. And whether you fight Izzy in Sydney or at a later date, it seems like, you know, given the things that have been said in the past, what was said in the cage, this could be a very kind of divisive and controversial build up a little bit. Um, how are you preparing yourself for that? Are you wanting to step away from it? Like, how, what do you think the build is going to be like? I mean, you saw it tonight. I'm prepared. I'm prepared for everything. Everything he says, anything he, he's behaving like a clown in there. No, that's not how a champion behaves. That's not how a man behaves. He's behaving like a child. Conduct yourself like a champion. There's people looking up to you and you're behaving like that? Nah. You know, if that sells tickets, good for him. I'll sell tickets my way. I'm a gentleman. I'm a man. And I'll behave like a man. When you do get in the octagon with him, how do you think this fight goes? How do you beat him? What? I'll knock him out just like I did tonight. You know, if not, we saw his fight with Alex Pereira. If I get him to the floor, it is not even a fight. It's not even a fight. If I just get my hands on him, it's not even a fight. I will manhandle him. I've done it before and I'll do it again. And, uh, you know, as far as the striking goes, look at, let's take that out of, the, out of the question. You are as good as your last performance. What did his performance, his last performance look like against Whitaker? Yeah, he beat him. It was a close fight. 
What did my last performance against Whitaker look like? So right now, that's how I plan on beating him. The same way I beat Whitaker tonight, by implementing the game plan and sticking to my style and doing what we do best. Listening to my coaches, listening to the great Monet Fisher, the great teammates I have at CIT, the guy, a small gym in South Africa coming up with game plans with this awkward style, this style that looks completely wrong to so many people. I'm the number one contender in the world right now. So it's time to put some respect on that. Uh, congratulations. Obviously a, a very dominant win tonight against a guy that you yourself said was very, very dangerous. So how satisfied are you with the way things went tonight? Yeah, very satisfied. It's always good, good to get the win. You know, that's all that really matters to me is uh, getting that win and getting that paycheck for the family and uh, rolling that legacy on. You know what I mean? Because he was dangerous. Like, uh, you know, there was, there was probably the most feared I've ever been in a fight maybe. Like him and, uh, and, and maybe Max. This was because I always say no one can beat me. No one can actually beat me. I don't believe anyone can beat me. But everyone has a puncher's chance. Everyone can catch you. And there's no one that's more dangerous and got a better chance of doing that than your year of Rodriguez. Uh, so there was, a, you know, obviously going into the game plan, you know, I showed him that respect. Mentally, I, I prepared as telling myself this. So it made me turn up in the gym every single day. It made me get the right training partners. It made me, uh, you know, try and work out a, a good game plan. You know, systematically break him down. Take away a lot of his main tools, and I think we did a great job. He still was always going to be able to throw things because he's that creative. Uh, so that's why he was always going to be dangerous. But um, I was able to nullify a lot of his main tools, things that he would usually be able to do frequently. Uh, he couldn't do that with me, and uh, then I was able to capitalize on that. What was it like round by round? Because you did take over pretty early, right? But at the start of each round, he's back on the feet and he's throwing strikes and that danger's there again. So was that, you know, kind of a difficult mental thing to get? Yeah, through? yeah. Like that was always going to be there. But I mean, being prepared for him, ready for him. And there might have been one exchange where things landed a lot, lot harder. I can't remember. Was that second round maybe? Um, like something landed. I'm like, oh, yeah, nice. There we go. A lot of the other things he would kick and I'd roll with it and see it coming. And again, having the right training partners to give me them looks was incredible. Um, but yeah, there was one that maybe done something, the punches landed. I was like, oh, yeah, they got in. I was fine, but um, he did a good job there. But other than that, uh, you know, I was all right, even though he was flicking stuff out and maybe, you know, landing on hands and, you know, maybe touching the top of the head and things like that. I was still pretty comfortable in there and um, still seen it all coming. So uh, I just had to pick the right moments because, again, like you, 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 you go in a little too aggressive without the right setup. It could be good night. So uh, you know, he's the type of guy that you need to, you need to, you need to, you need to be, uh, you need to be careful. You need to be smart. You know what I mean? You need to be thinking in there. You need to be doing the right things, and we did the right things. Uh, you revealed afterwards that you're going to need some surgery. You need a little time off, I guess. Uh, I mean, how serious is that? How long do you expect to be out? I mean, I didn't mean to scare everyone with that. Like when I say I'm going to do it, like yeah, yeah, it's not a big deal. I'll be back in uh, ASAP. Like uh, it will be a, a quick one. Just need to get uh, something sorted. But um, I'll be training, you know, like, man, I broke my hand last International Fight Week. And you see me at Abu Dhabi ready to fight Islam or Charles Oliveira. That was a broken bone. You saying a broken bone, we'll be right. I'll be, uh, yeah, don't, you, don't need to, you don't need to stress about that. I'll be training, I'm professional, you know, I'll be, I, I want to be active. Uh, again, I'll be back in there before most of the other guys, the other champions anyway, so don't worry about that. Nice. Last thing for me, Dana was here earlier, and we kind of asked him what he'd like to see for you, you know, because you keep mentioning lightweight. But obviously, Ilya was here tonight. And he said, basically, you've proven everything. He'll Whatever you want to do, he'll kind of go with it. So what is most important to you? You keep saying that lightweight. But oh, man, look, like, we all know I want that lightweight belt. You know, we all know I want that rematch. You know, I want that Islam fight. I think uh, not only uh, for me to get that belt, for me to get that win back, but I think it is a massive fight for the UFC as well. I think it's a fight everyone wants to see. It was literally that type of fight. It was that close. It was a, a, a cracking fight. Um, everyone... It. And uh, it was a very, very high level. There was one and two going at it, and we showed out. It really was that. Um, yeah, he lived up to the hype. I lived up to the hype, and that fight lived up to the hype. Uh, we just need to see five to ten. Earlier in the week, Charles had said that October might be too soon for him to fight Islam uh, in Abu Dhabi. So does, with that, I'm curious, did you hear that? And if not, does that kind of make you circle that date even more? Well, it makes it a lot better opportunity for me to step in there. But, I mean, like I said, I'm not ruling that out. It's funny, these people want extra time. Like, here I'm telling you I'm going to get surgery and I'm probably going to turn up there on October. So that's what I'm showing you, you know what I mean? Find me a champ, like, you know, there's not many of them anyway. 
I got no, uh, you, you maybe got your, your easies and myself that is doing this. You know, we're going out there, we're, we're staying active, we're fighting the fights that a lot of people wouldn't. Uh, and yeah, so, uh, you know, I think people need to respect that a lot. People talk about BMFs and all that type of stuff. They're real BMFs. Guys that turn up when there's a lot on the line. Uh, and yeah, I'll leave it at that. Uh, you had the face off with Ilya Kaysai when he was le when you were leaving. Um, historically, like you know, you and Max have been pretty respectful. Like I know you and Brian got under each other's skin on the Ultimate Fighter, but Ilya's he talks a lot, and he, you know, he hopped the barricade to, to face off you. Does does that get you excited that you'll have also a foil at press conferences and in the media to like? hundred oh, percent. See, mine and uh, Ortega's was a little bit. It's weird. Just spend too much time with each other. And we just got annoyed with each other. This guy's gonna be just talking his shit, and I and I love that. I'm like, yeah, talk your shit. Now I can, you know, I can have a fun with it and, and punch you in the face for it. You know what I mean? And and feel good punching your head through the canvas. Because uh, again, like, I'm gonna squash that bloke. So doesn't matter. A lot has happened in the year. You had the fight with Islam. It was very close. You get this performance tonight, finishing Yair Rodriguez. I know you're fresh off the victory, but you've been able to kind of soak this in. How much you've really leveled up, just in the grand scheme of things. Now you know people consider you the greatest fighter, you know, in the sport right now. I don't ever get to soak it in properly, to be quite honest. I wish I did soak it in more. Um, it's a it's a good trait to have, where I can just move on and play what's in front of me, and you know, it, it makes me be able to. In camps, I tell you, like you know, I can still you know turn up in the gym, and like it helps me with all that type of stuff. But I feel like I don't try and really soak it in and enjoy it, like and enjoy it enough and embrace, embrace it enough. So I will, you know, obviously I appreciate everything. I appreciate the fans, I appreciate the love, but I, I forget about it like that. Uh, again, it's a good thing to have because it's, uh, it keeps me disciplined, it keeps me, you know, grounded, but at the same time, I wish I could really appreciate and, and understand what I'm doing right now because it's pretty incredible. Five title, you know, five defenses, six, uh, seven title fights I think I've had. Um, it's pretty crazy. It seems like yesterday I got the belt, you know what I mean? And, and look what we're starting to do. So it's pretty, pretty crazy. I think I need to really sit down and uh, really, really take it all in. You said before the fight that you weren't too impressed with Ilya and you didn't really want to talk about him too much. Can you, can you talk about him now? You know, what you think about him as a challenger? It's funny with this one, you know, you, you want to talk up your opponents, right? You want everyone to know like, uh, yeah, so it's funny, but I mean, he's going to talk his shit. So people, I remember, I, I can say whatever I wanted, you know, people don't have to believe it, but I was sitting there, it was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't say how easy I think that fight's going to be, because then people might not be interested, but he's going to talk his shit, so people are going to want me to want to see me punch him in the face, so it don't matter, but uh, yeah, I look at that as a, again, no disrespect to the bloke, but the shit he's doing ain't going to work on me, and uh, hopefully you get to see that soon.